Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is CJ. Going to give you guys a quick update on the reef tank. A few things have happened over the last week or so, and I finally have enough time to kind of get you guys caught up on everything. I will say my reef tank's roughly about 10 months old, and it seems like the more I watch it, the more I notice things happening. It's never a dull moment, so I always have my phone ready to kind of catch some random clips for you guys, and that's kind of what inspired this video. You know, I had a few things happen over the last week, some good, you know, some experimenting, and then obviously some bad here recently. So I'm going to kind of cover everything in this update. Hopefully it doesn't drag out too long. But let's go ahead and get to it. Now there's only been two times I was able to profit in the hobby. You know, profit's always a good thing. But the reason for it was really the bad part. First time being when I had my first tank. And I actually uh, had to break it down from it failing miserably after about eight months. And the second time is definitely for a better reason. I'm going to kind of share that with you now. Now this guy's definitely bagged up and ready to go. He's the result of me accidentally turning my anemone a few weeks ago. They finally got to the point to where they're healed up and I was able to get them off the rock safely and now I can make a small profit off of them. Now I may have mentioned this to you guys before, but this torch coil was definitely putting on too much size. He was actually blocking the swim through I have behind it, so you know I had to do something. I basically took him out of the tank, I didn't get a chance to record it. Took some pliers, broke them up at the base, ended up getting three nice heads off of him, selling it, so not only did I get more room for the fish to swim, Still get to keep the rest of my torch coral, which is doing well, and I made a little money. So hey, that's the three wins in my book, and I'll take it. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before. This is my first time. You know, I went to the grocery store, and I've been wanting to kind of get some uh, fresh food for these guys to kind of snack on. And I figured, hey, the multi bar may like it as well. So I went ahead and picked up some fresh clams. Now, I'm going to have to admit, I had a lot of struggles getting that clam to finally get open. But once I did so, just took some tank water, rinsed them off as much as I could, cleaned off any debris or anything that looked like it shouldn't have been there. I just dropped them in. Now with action like this going on, you know, I had to pull out my phone and get some random video for you guys. As you can tell, everyone's kind of getting a piece of it. Clownfish were involved, they were getting their bites. The rasses are some pigs, damsels, even the hermit crabs. Multibar looked like he had interest, but once I came with the camera, of course, you know, he likes to shy away. Now one of the bigger surprises, I would say would be my lawnmower blenny. You know, I thought he was coming over to investigate. You know, these guys like to meddle. But before you knew it, you know, he was starting to peck away as well. So, you know, I assume these guys only eat algae. I don't know if my tank is starting to lack a food source for them or if they actually eat meat. You know, I thought this was pretty cool to share. So I figured I'd get some footage and show you guys. Now, I did want to take a second and follow up on this clip I shared a few videos ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the link down below. The whole time I was trying to figure out what was eating my devil's hand coral and the other night, I noticed who it was, this damn emerald crab. Now to make matters worse, you know, after I shared this video the next night, he was right back at it again like nothing ever happened. So this went on for a couple of nights and I finally reached a point to where I had to get this guy out of the tank. So my tools of choice was a toothbrush and a net. Now I don't know how hard these crabs usually are to catch, but you know, this guy had the audacity to hold his ground with his claws up and fight me to the end. I mean, that's pretty much what ended up getting him caught. He clipped onto the toothbrush, wouldn't let go took him out and I threw him in the net and here he is so you know he went out like a man I respect him but he had to go so it's going to cover all the random clips I had for the last week or so so let's get to the tank today this is what it looks like around 7 p.m lights are going to turn off at midnight so this is a perfect time for recording cores are normally open and happy the house is dark and you know this is just looking good on film but let's get to the main reason I really want to take a second and talk to you guys now, if you guys new to my channel, you may not know, but I had my share of some livestock issues with my tank, especially involving ick and things dying. So a few months ago, I posted a video. I'll put a link down below when these things first started happening. And um, at the point in time, you know, I had lost a few flame angels. I lost a few fish. So I really given up and I was trying to decide if I was going to go fishless for a few months or uh, just ride it out with the ick. Now, I do want to make sure I mention, when I first started my tank, I did not quarantine any fish, and I have not quarantined fish over the life of this tank. But in the beginning stages, I did try one thing that I thought would try to help prevent issues by dipping my fish in a quick quarantine bath called Safety Stop. So I want to make sure I mention that for anyone new because you may not have known that either. So at this point, I was at a fork in the road. You know, should I go fishless the recommended way? Six weeks, you know, see if I can cure this issue, get rid of it for good, or ride it out take the lumps and kind of go with the other side of the hobby's thoughts with you know every tank's gonna have ick you know you're gonna have to just keep good water quality healthy fish and just roll with it and take your lumps as you get them and of course you know we being a new hobbyist 
I decided to take the route that's going to be the most enjoyable as far as me looking at my tank. I decided to ride it out, keeping my fish inside. So this decision was based on a few things, and I know a lot of people have different opinions and views. Hey, I'm more than happy to have a good conversation, so hey, drop me a comment, and we can talk about it. But let me explain to you my thinking on it first. So it's obvious that, you know, have a general understanding of what ick is. Let's assume we all do. If you get past that, you really got to think about how ick is introduced into your system to begin with. And this is what kind of really pushed me to make my decision. You know, of course, you want to avoid the things you can control, bringing sick fish in, you know, not mixing tank water from your LFS, you know, even when you're pulling uh, a tank out of the bag from the LFS, that water getting on the net, putting it in your tank, you know, that also is something that could transfer ick. Okay, let's get past those things. Those are things we can control. So if you quarantine, you know, you avoid those things, you don't have to worry about them. But what about the corals and the invertebrates? What about those things that can carry ick into your tank that we all have to have in our reef tanks. You know, we're never done adding corals, we're never done adding invertebrates to your system. And unless you really plan on running a fishless system for the life of your whole tank until you get it completely stocked with corals and give those corals time for, you know, the ick that was on them to die and go through its life cycle. I mean, you're talking months and months and months of quarantining fish and quarantining your coral before you put them together to completely avoid the chance of ick. Now, they, hey, this is me with a semi-educated opinion, and I really want to talk about this. I really want to know you guys' opinion on it, but that was my main reason. I felt like I'm not done adding corals, and until I'm done adding corals, unless I don't want to ever see a fish in my tank, then I'm just going to roll with them together and just kind of ride it out. So, you know, the ick did not reappear in my tank for months. You know, they say it, should, it can lay dormant for a certain amount of time. The ick in my system really didn't do any damage until now. And the last time it did damage was in November. So as you can tell, that's a pretty big gap of being dormant. And the fish haven't shown any signs of, you know, issues the whole time. So I guess the point I'm trying to make, you know, especially with me being a new hobbyist. And by new, I've been in the hobby for about three years, three and a half years. You know, a year or so in freshwater with Mbunas and then two years worth of reef tanks with two different tanks. So, you know, I'm still new, still a lot to learn, but I try to make sure that if I'm gonna make a decision, it's as educated as possible, and I fully understand the consequences of that decision. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna roll with this. I'm gonna stick to it. You know, I'm gonna keep the fish in here, understanding that my game plan is to stock this tank as fast as possible with all of the corals and all of the things I want that can introduce it to the tank. Once I reach that point, then, then I can realistically start thinking about, um, you know, quarantining all of the fish and the tank for a period of time to really eradicate the egg from my system. But until then, it boils down to doing the right thing versus can I really look at this tank empty and deal with two different tanks for months and months and months until I fully stock it? And the answer is no, I'm just not that patient. So what's gonna cover my thoughts on the egg in my tank? As far as everything else, water quality is great, corals are looking great, and all the remaining fish are doing well. My plan is, until I get this tank completely stocked and I can quarantine everything, I'm gonna keep these fish as stress-free as possible. So if ick does flare up again, they'll have a better chance of surviving and resisting any problems. So other than that, we're gonna cut this vid short. Don't want it to drag on too long. So definitely, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy.